Welcome to the only Ouija board museum in the world, the Salem Ouija Board Museum. The Ouija board has been a source of intrigue generation after generation, being able to communicate with the other side. It's no wonder so many were perplexed by the notion, excited, scared, and yet easily fascinated. People view the Ouija board in one of two ways, innocent and harmless, or an extremely stupid way to conjure up evil. However, there have been reportings of very bad experiences like possession, hauntings, and as far as death. The history of Ouija goes back, and behind it lies mythology and mystery. Experts, whether in religious beliefs or the supernatural world, will warn you that the Ouija is not to be laughed upon. Another form of divination found in this museum is automatic writing, a psychic ability allowing someone to automatically write down words that they are completely unaware of. The Fox sisters, Leah, Kate, and Maggie, were at the forefront of spiritualism at this time. They were living in Hydesdale, New York, in a haunted house in 1848, where their interest in the paranormal stemmed and grew, which sparked a group of spiritualists. In 1850, their public seances captured the likes of many notable people, and they climbed quietly into new social circles. And spiritualism became even more popular during the American Civil War and World War I, when people wanted to communicate with their loved ones even more. In 1886, newspapers began reporting news of a talking board. In 1890, it was created through collaboration of Charles Kennard, Elijah Bond, and Washington Bowie, who was the man who started the Kennard Novelty Company itself. And the board was initially marketed as a game for the whole family. By the 1890s, the Ouija had gained an insane amount of exposure and popularity that roughly 2,000 boards were flying off shelves every week. But there were many feuds before the before mentioned over the Ouija board. They mostly didn't speak for over a century because of it. Fold's family then sold the Ouija board company to Parker Brothers in Salem, Massachusetts. And in 1967, the witch trials happened and the Ouija board sold over 2 million boards. In times to come, the Ouija board began to change from household board game to an evil and menacing theme, being displayed in movies like The Exorcist and intriguing to those into the occult. In 1970-1980, more and more negative reports about using the Ouija for satanic rituals began to spread in flame panic, and some cultures and religions even began to burn them around the year 2001. But even through the reports of abuse and evil, we still maintain our fascination for the board, whether you believe it is a harmless game of manifestation or a device to let in unknown entities too dangerous to touch, always use the board in respect and always say goodbye. In 1920 began J.M. Simmons Ouija board instruction sheet depicting a black cat, two four-leaf clovers, a swat sticker, a hexagram, and in the middle lies a magical Middle East city, could be Baghdad, but remains unknown. The occult imagery and German Nazi symbol with the Star of David were more than enough to gain public attention to the board. As it looked upon with so much sadness, it wasn't always so. In the 20s, it was a symbol of prosperity, hope, good luck, and peace, and had zero to do with the Third Reich. But then again, Baghdad isn't so magical these days either. My trip to the Ouija board museum was also to purchase a new Ouija board since I collect them. So the one with the swastika is the one that I purchased. I purchased it for what the symbol did mean, hope and prosperity and love. I don't know that people will ever look at this symbol again and not associate it with the Nazis. This symbol goes way back, way back before it became a symbol of evil. In the Indian culture, it became a sign of good luck and hope. The Nazis took this symbol of peace and turned it around, literally just reversing the symbol. They took this beautiful sign of peace 
and turned it into pure evil. But you'll still see it throughout Asia, and it remains a symbol of good hope and prosperity. It is one of the oldest symbols in the world. J.J. Simmons' original instruction sheet came with questions to ask the board, just in case you're at a loss. These boards are gone now and unlikely to be found, except by sheer chance. The one that I just showed you that I purchased is extremely, extremely rare. So if anyone that's watching this video actually finds one, please let me know. You may even find duplicates of the board that I purchased made to look similar, but that's exactly what they are, merely copycats. And now I am the owner of a very rare piece of history. John Kozik is the owner of the world's only Ouija Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. There is no inventor of the board. John is a member and founder of the Talking Board Historical Society, working to preserve and uncover the history surrounding it. The museum items you see here are all from his own collection or donated to him. He's a great storyteller, and I greatly enjoyed meeting and speaking with him. In fact, I plan on buying more boards from him in the future. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. If you like my videos, please consider subscribing and don't forget to hit the like button.